So the GoPro Hero 12 has been out for about two months now and in today's video I want to share my experience using this here at home and also when I've been out traveling. This video is not paid or sponsored by GoPro so this is going to be my completely honest truth about the GoPro Hero 12. Now first let's talk about battery life and overheating. Now as a GoPro user you might be familiar with the term overheating and that it's almost impossible to shoot longer videos with a GoPro unless you shoot a time lapse or do activities which cools it down, like snorkeling, driving with the camera placed outside of your car, or use it as a helmet cam when you ride your motorcycle. You get the point. So you would basically need a constant airflow to the GoPro Hero 12 in order to shoot longer videos. For my personal use though, the only time or the longest records I do is when I shoot time lapses, and this seems to work fine without any issues. But I've also spent two weeks in Hawaii now with this camera, and my biggest concern was of course overheating and I think we had an average of 38 degrees Celsius in the shades and there was barely any wind so it was hot. But traveling around the island of Oahu with the Hero 12 now, to my surprise I did not experience any overheating issues or any unexpected shutdowns. But it's also important to know that we only recorded a few minutes at a time so I can't really say if the camera would overheat for a longer record like a 30 minute clip for example. But the fact that it didn't have any single overheating issues on this trip was actually pretty amazing. Now, another amazing thing with the Hero 12 is also the image quality. I mean, the quality coming from the Hero 12 is outstanding, and in my opinion, it has the best quality, period. But image quality means nothing if the camera is not reliable or if you're not guaranteed to get the exact same result every single time you press the shutter button, which is something I think GoPro needs to fix. Because the quality is good, but it's also not so good. But before we go into details here, I also want to say that most of the clips that I shot on this trip actually turned out pretty amazing. I also used some new accessories from PGY Tech, which has made the whole GoPro experience much better since we don't have that magnetic mounting system on the GoPro, which all other brands seems to integrate now. But thankfully, PGY Tech has made this accessory line now, which makes it so much more convenient to use a GoPro. And I can easily swap between different mounts and tripods with the press of a button. And also the neck mount from PGY I think this is awesome. Uh, at first, I actually thought this was going to be a little bit uncomfortable to wear on a five hour hike, but it was actually pretty comfortable to wear. So I ended up wearing it without using any cameras on it. So this is something that I can highly recommend if you are if you want to do those POV shots or if you do any behind the scenes, like if you do tutorials out in the field, like let's say you make a drone video or anything like that and you want to show the controller, well, this is the perfect accessory for you. So if you want to learn more about these accessories from PGY Tech, there is a link down in the description below. Now, one of the downsides with GoPro Pro though, which I've learned now on this trip, is that you might not always get the perfect shot, and it's actually hard to tell on the screen itself whether or not the shot turned out usable. So the only way to check this is by dumping the files on your computer and check them there, or to check via the app, which is something I wish I knew before this trip. So it kind of sucked that we went through a full hike, and it was first when I got back home to Norway I saw all the problems with artifacts, awful stabilization, and a white balance being far off. I mean, when you buy a camera now in 2023, it's almost 2024, you should expect more, right? Especially if you're a first time user and you don't want to deal with manual settings, which in this case is something I didn't want to do either because the weather in Hawaii changes so fast. And I wanted to spend the least amount of time changing settings. But even though some of the clips turned out unusable, I still had a great experience using the Hero 12. Now, when it comes to color profiles, we have the natural, vibrant, flat, and the GP log profile and this is more of a personal preference and you're also able to shoot in 10 bit using all these profiles which is one of the biggest advantages when it comes to the GoPro 12. On the Action 4 for example you would need to shoot in D log M in order to get 10 bit which is what I prefer anyway so it doesn't really matter to me but if you want to use the normal color profile on the Action 4 you are also limited to 8 bit but to be honest 8 bit versus 10 bit doesn't really matter when you upload videos here to YouTube. YouTube because there's going to be minor differences after the compression anyway. Another interesting thing I've been playing around with on this trip was also HDR versus standard video. I still think I prefer standard over HDR and at times the HDR looks 
just a little bit weird, but it definitely has its uses and I would prefer HDR when I'm riding my motorcycle, for example, but for traveling, I still prefer the standard video with the natural color profile. Now, when it comes to underwater, I was also able to do some snorkeling, which is one of my favorite things to do next to hiking. And I'm actually pretty impressed with the underwater quality coming from the Hero 12, but the stabilization seems to be a little bit off here and there, which happens each time there's a change or a correction in white balance. So before you head off to snorkel on your next vacation, I suggest setting a manual uh, white balance. And you can do something like 4000 Kelvin, which usually gives a pretty awesome look. But overall, I was able to capture some amazing underwater footage, and this is also where I think the GoPro shines. Now, snapping a few photos here in Hawaii, there's really nothing to say. The GoPro 12 has the best photo quality in my opinion, and it just looks awesome. Here's also a few photo grabs taken from the 5.3K videos, and even these look amazing. So if you're planning on shooting as many photos as you shoot videos with your action camera, the GoPro Hero 12 is a great choice. But now let's talk about user experience, which is what I think matters the most. So I've been using the GoPro Hero 12 for about two months now, and most of that time I've spent here in Norway at home, which is usually where I have more time to test and set things up and maybe do some fine tuning here and there. So I actually want to talk about the whole experience that I had with the GoPro Hero 12 on this trip to Hawaii, because when you're out traveling, you want to have the best overall experience, right? And the worst thing that can happen when you try to document your trip is that if your camera should break down or you know, be a struggle to use. So when it comes to a GoPro, you kind of have to expect lag. You have to expect freezes. So when you're out trying to navigate through the screen, for example, it will not be as smooth as if you were using any other action camera on the market. I'm not sure why this is an issue with GoPro though, but it seems to affect almost every single model that GoPro currently offers. But despite having an awful experience when trying to navigate through the menu, this is usually something you do occasionally. And when you have everything set up with the different profiles, it's all about pressing the record button to capture your moments. So when I need a selfie stick, I use the selfie stick from PGY Tech. And when I ride my motorcycle, I use the quick lock system from Insta. 360. So these are two different accessory options. Both are linked down in the description if you want to check it out. So to use accessories like these makes it so much more convenient to use a GoPro than it was before when it needed to, you know, unscrew and then screw on it. It took forever and it was a hassle to change to different mounts. So if you're looking to get some amazing accessories, check out the accessories from PGY Tech and Insta360 down in the description below. But when it comes to the overall experience using this on that trip to Hawaii, I'm going to be straight up honest with you on this one. I didn't have any issues at all. And we kind of set this up. My wife was actually using this the most and we set it up with different profiles. So whatever I wanted her to record, I changed to that profile and she was turning on and off the camera by using the shutter button. So when she wants to record something, she pressed the shutter button. And when she wanted to stop the recording, she pressed the shutter button again and the camera turned itself off automatically, which is also something that I appreciate. All cameras have that. So, but it's just those minor things that will benefit someone which have never used an action camera before. So overall, the experience was great, but I still wish that I could get the same result on every single clip I recorded and that the HDR was a little bit more crisp and didn't look that cartoonish, which it did at times. So. Yeah, it's a great camera. Is it something that I would be using more than any other action camera? I don't think so. I still think it's a little bit unreliable, but like I said, it's only been two months. So I'm gonna give this another four months and uh, see how this uh, holds up. If there's a new firmware coming in the next four months and uh, I'll come back with this for my six months later review. But if you're mainly looking to get a GoPro Hero 12 for the 5.3K resolution, you might as well go for the GoPro Hero 10 or 11. These are running with the exact same GP2 processor. Uh, and uh, the problem with that processor is that it's not strong enough. The GoPro keeps on adding feature after feature after feature, but the processor is shit, it's bad, so it can't keep up. So if you're gonna have the best GoPro experience and still get the exact same quality, 
as you get with this one in the standard video profile, then you know you should go for the GoPro Hero 10, which doesn't have all these unnecessary features which you might not need, which is also causing uh, a lot of hiccups with the GoPro Hero 12. So that's also something to consider. But when it comes to my main use case for the GoPro Hero 12, I can see myself using this mainly on my motorcycle with the Max Lens Mode 2, which gives an amazing look. But here I also prefer to use my Insta360 X3, which is more versatile when it comes to framing. So the GoPro Hero 12 versus, you know, 10, 11, any other camera, honestly, I don't know, because this was kind of unexpected. I didn't expect this to perform this good, even though some of the clips were poor, I didn't expect this to perform as good as it did. So honestly, I don't know. But whatever you decide, let me know in the comments below. And also if you enjoyed this uh, review of the GoPro Hero 12, let me know by dropping a like down below. And if this is the first time that you're here on this channel, make sure to hit that subscribe button. That would be appreciated. And it really helps me make these unpaid and unsponsored videos. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care and I will catch you in the next one.